Holy Ghost. Drink the Holy Ghost. Obakasha yikere. Drink your new level. Drink your new level. Drink your new level of the Holy Spirit. Drink your new level of the voice of God. Drink your new level of discernment. Drink your new level. Obakasanda randaya. Of receiving downloads. Yes. Of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Drink your new level. Yes. Of intimacy with God. Oneness with him. Yes, hearing from him. Yes, receiving visions and downloads from him. Drink your new level, more Holy Ghost. Let your power be raw. Let the purity of your presence be raw. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you don't have your journals, please go get them. Or prepare to type on your phones, your tablets, your computers. I'll give you one more minute to go and get those items. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And we're going to go into our teaching. More of your presence, Holy Spirit. More of your strong, weighty glory. Yes, increase, increase, increase. Yeah, shift every person under the sound of my voice to alertness and a desire. Yes, to receive what you would teach today and to be transformed. Yes, by all you would download. Yes. More Holy Ghost. More Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the teaching tonight is going to be on how to identify the voice of God versus your voice, the voice of people, the voice of the devil, and the angels of light. Now, I did start this teaching last night, and so part one will be on Apostle Praises youtube channel uh by tomorrow uh, and so i'm only going to give a short synopsis on what i taught last night and then go into the teaching for today and so it's important for you to go listen to part one because i'm just going to give a, a short introduction uh, so that we can flow into the fullness of what God is doing today. But last night we did discuss that topic in uh, in in great uh, uh, expansion and uh, even just uh, uh, in a in a way that really brings you to a place of of thinking and processing God's voice versus your voice. God's voice versus the voices of the people in your life. Okay. And so, um, as we are processing this revelation, I am going to be asking you some questions to, that you would need to even search out in the moment, but also in your personal time with the Lord, as you would grow and expand in greater dimension of hearing his voice over every other voice. Okay, and so um, our scripture reference is uh, from John 8 and from John 10. And I'm only going to read John 8 and 12, but I do encourage you to go read the entire chapter. Okay, and uh, John 8 and 12 says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to read John 10, 1 through 5, but I do encourage you to go and read all of John 10, okay? And John 10, 1 through 5 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd 
of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Okay. And then in John 10 and 10, it says the thief purposely comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose, the purpose of Jesus Christ, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And often we hear uh, the, that scripture, uh, life in that more abundantly. Okay, and so these references of scriptures are talking about how if we really are children of God, we know his voice and we will follow his voice and not another voice. Okay, and so basically Jesus is saying a, a determinant to really identifying if you belong to him. It's if you follow his voice and not another voice. You know his voice when he is speaking and you follow it. So if there are voices that you are following that are not of God, that are leading you away from God, because he says that his voice leads you into light and away from darkness. And so if there are voices that are leading you into darkness, leading you away from the light, that is not his voice. And you are not operating like a sheep that is his. Because those who know his voice, follow his voice, and are guided into light. And we know that light is representative of um, illumination, revelation, truth. It is uh, an indication of the glory, uh, success, favor, honor, dignity. It's, it's, uh, um, light is also indicative of life and abundance. Okay? And so you shouldn't be being led into death, darkness, doom, gloom, depression, heaviness, sin, bondages, carnality, okay, ungodly characteristics, ungodly behavior, because if a voice is leading you into that, that is not the voice of God. Insecurity, low self-esteem, okay, because the voice of God leads you into light, and where there is light, there is boldness. There is confidence because you feel secure, protected, and safe in the light. There is a knowing in the light. Okay? When I'm in a dark room, I, I, everything's obscure. I'm not really sure what's going on. I, you know, I have to feel my way. I'm not sure what I'm touching, what I'm stepping on, what I'm running into. But when I'm in the light... I'm clear about the pathway. I'm clear about where I'm going. I'm clear about who I can trust, who I cannot trust. Okay, I'm clear about, uh, you know, uh, where, where I'm headed or where I should be headed if I am listening to the voice of God. Okay, so we just want to hone in on that mindset, okay? And so in these passages of scriptures, Jesus is letting us know that there are some that can sneak up over the wall, okay, and come into his sheepfold and act like they're his, but they're not. He says, these people are thieves and robbers, okay? And so if you study John, especially John 8 and 10, these conversations are actually happening uh, in and around the Feast of the Tabernacle, which is comparable to a church event, 
if we uh, was to be having a conference in this day and age or, you know, some type of event at church, some type of celebration or whatever. It is interesting that Jesus would have to have this type of conversation in the midst of people that are supposed to be his. But he's saying in the middle of them, some of y'all ain't mine. Okay, some of y'all just snuck over the wall and you are operating like you are of me, but you're not of me because my sheep know my voice and follow me. And so a lot of the people that were at these events, they were questioning who Jesus is. They were questioning if he was the Messiah. They were questioning if he, uh, you know, if, if uh, he was really legit in uh who he was as a as the savior, as a prophet, as a teacher, uh, uh, and, the, and then they were very very challenged uh, by his presence, by uh, many of the uh, spiritual revelations and insights that he he would share. Okay, and uh, they constantly accuse him of breaking the religious laws and even the natural laws. And not just the people who wasn't saved, but the people who were saved was wondering why he had not been, uh, you know, uh, imprisoned yet and even killed. Okay. And so when we think about those who sneak up over the wall, John 10 and 10 lets us know that these people come to steal, kill and destroy. These are not people that are for us. They look like us. They operate like us, but they are not of us. Okay? This is what Jesus is saying. Okay? And the Bible actually uh, refers to these type of people that sneak up over the wall as angels of light. In Matthew 7 and 15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous, ravenous wolves. That's Matthew 7 and 15. So these false prophets look like, okay, sheep. They operate like ministers. They know the word. They have revelation. They even have prophetic insight. And the, the difference is they're not getting their revelation from God. They're getting it from the second heaven, from familiar spirits. And this scripture, John 10 and 10, is even showing us how familiar spirits operate. Because these people have come up over the wall and they have integrated themselves in and around the saints. Okay, and they are gathering information, becoming familiar, listening to your conversations, monitoring you, and then they just hone in on one or two words. Okay, <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, how did you know that? Another thing that uh, uh, people who operate as false prophets or agents of light do is they're getting their, their information from the second heaven. And these spirits that are in and around you at your job or at your, in your home, in and around your family and friends, okay, uh, they are, uh, you know, being oppressed by spirits or spirits are operating in and around the atmosphere. Okay, the enemy is the prince of the power of the air. Uh, there are principalities, territorial spirits, rulers of darkness in and around regions and spheres, in and around your communities that are picking up information on frequencies and airwaves. Okay, because as words leave your mouth, they're living, all right, in and around you. And they're picking up information. They're monitoring you. And so the, they're feeding these angels of light. The, the spirits from the second heavens are feeding these angels of light intel on you. All right. Repeating prophecies that they didn't heard from God or heard people tell you from God. 
repeating stuff that they heard you say and other people say and on and on and on to you and you thinking, this is God. But these people do not really follow God. And this is where we have to come into the truth about what God is speaking to us. Because he tells us in 1 John 4, 1 through 3, not to believe every spirit, but to test the spirits, whether they are of him. Okay, and he lets us know that false prophets have gone out into the world. All right, and so, um, but we would know his spirit and those who have his spirit by his fruit. Okay, and so when we when we talk about knowing his fruit, uh, uh, these are people who are actually able to manifest his character, his nature, his identity. And, and actually demonstrate that they live the principles of his word and what he has decided is spiritually correct, appropriate, true, factual, okay? And so if these people are not actually representing godly fruit and godly identity, and living a life that lines up with God, we need to be honest that this is not the spirit of God. And therefore, I will not follow it. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming, themselves into apostles of Christ. No wonder. For Satan himself transforms himself into the angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if ministers, if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works and so this scripture is so interesting because these people appear to be of God and they appear to have light but this light is false okay and then there appear to be ministers of righteousness that's wow just process that a moment. This is someone that is a deceiver, an angel of light, appearing to be a minister of righteousness. And God is telling you to beware and discern. How would you know? How would you know? We're just processing that question. Righteousness actually means integrity, virtue, purity, rightness, correctness. So there's appearance of good. But there is a form of godliness. I just want you to process that for a moment. There is appearance of good, but there is a form of godliness.
How would you know? There's an appearance of good, but there's a form of godliness. How would you know? Ask the Lord, how would I know? Ask the Lord, how many times have you talked yourself out of recognizing that there, there is someone that has a form of godliness, but you're like, nah, it's just me. A form of godliness means to have have a, a it means to uh, to to operate in a scheme to have to have like a gospel scheme. You're you're scheming people, okay? Your your actions are uh, operating like. Uh, a scheme uh, you appear holy but there is an unholiness about you there is mixture about you um, you're, you're able to perform miracle signs and wonders but they're not lasting uh, and then also th there are tricks with them uh, entertainment, magical schemes uh, uh, tied to them. Okay? Uh, there, there are all these um, compromises tied to them or if you do this, then I'll give you this type of um, litigations tied to it. Okay? Um... You 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 feel the 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 um, uncleanness, even though they're speaking the right things, they're saying the right things, but you you feel uneasy in your spirit. You feel dirty. You feel unclean. You feel like you're betraying God. It's, it's, it's a form of godliness. Some of the things that you are being asked to do or you are being told are contrary to the word of God or um, have carnality in it. It, it has a subtle manipulation and seduction to it. You feel seduced. You feel wooed. Okay, you you feel drawn to that person rather to, than God.
And sometimes even this form of godliness could be you. And, and one of the ways you could tell if that person is God is if you are being drawn to them and they're not drawing you to God. Okay, then then that can be an indicator as well, because anything that is being taught, anything that is being sung, anything that is being preached, anything that's being done in the name of the Lord should draw you to God for the purposes of drawing you into greater enlightenment of him, greater relationship with him, greater identity of him so that's how you know an angel of light versus someone that's truly godly their voice should lead you to God not to idolizing them not to being drawn into the world not to be drawn into uh, other uh, areas of compromise or adultery where, where something has exalted itself above who God is in your life. So on last night I talked about how there is a holy trinity and an unholy trinity. So we know the Holy Trinity is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so the Father is creator of all. He's the governor, the Lord, our ruler of everything. And we know the Son part of the Trinity is, is God wrapping himself in flesh, coming down as Savior and saving the entire world, basically, of their sins. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God that teaches us his ways. It's the glory of God, the, uh, the truth of God on the inside of us that further guides us into all truth. It's, his presence has the power, okay, to transform us, to, to, to further guide us into truth and to empower us to live truth. Okay, and so the Holy Spirit is who our flesh should be subjected to. This is where the word says that uh, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. We are not our own. And so when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and lives on the inside of you. You are no longer you, your own boss. The Holy Spirit is the boss of your temple. He's the governor of your temple. Okay? And so when you consider the Holy Trinity, the Holy Trinity and the kingdom of God should be what is governing your life. Okay? And then there's an unholy trinity, which is the flesh, the world, and the demonic. So the Holy Trinity is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the unholy trinity is flesh, the world, and the demonic. So when we consider the unholy trinity, we talked about this last night, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stay on this long. The, uh, the flesh... Its voice tends to feed your will, your ambition, your desires. Okay? It tends to feed what you want to happen, what you want to experience, and what feels good, what is pleasurable. So this is where you get into sexual immorality, impurity, drunkenness, addictions, failures, selfishness, self-ambitions. Okay, you cannot cast out flesh. You cannot cast it out. You have to kill flesh. Flesh has to be killed. So if I, uh, I'm going to put some 
scriptures on the chat because I'm not going to go into those scriptures on the flesh. And this is where we stopped last night, where we begin to talk about the world system. So the world system, its voice feeds the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the prides of life. The world system is, is where you get your appetite of your flesh fed. I'm just giving you a moment to write that down. So the voice of the flesh, when you're hearing uh, the voice of the flesh, it feeds your will, it feeds your ambitions, your desires of what you want to happen. What you want to experience, what you want to have, what you desire. The world system that voice feeds the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the prize of life, the things that are craving in your flesh, in your sinful man. Okay? Anything that entices us to fall to the flesh and to the enemy is the system of this world working. I'll say that again. Anything that is enticing you to fall to the flesh and to the enemy of this world is the system of the world working. The enemy of, of the world is the devil. He, he is ruling the world. And, and evil men or, or men in power also uh, rule the world as well, but through demonic oppressions and litigations, okay? And so the world system entails mixture, idolatry, and a drawing away. From God. The voice of the world entails mixture, idolatry, and a drawing away from God. So if you're hearing voices that are drawing you away, Causing you to get into mixture. Provoking you to engage in idolatry, which is adultery. Because anytime that we uh, put another God above God, that's, that's adultery against him. So when the world system feeds you, it feeds you what tastes good to you. It's not concerned about your soul. It's, it's concerned about feeding the flesh and the pleasures of your, your sinful nature.
the voices of this world that it tickles your ears so it's like oh that sounds good that must be God it, it the world system feeds you what you want to hear the world system entertains you baits you tempts you seduces you lures you entraps you snares you captivate and charm you so that it can draw you out of God's light into its darkness so the world voice, the world's voice would tell you it's okay if you don't read your Bible every day it's okay if you don't go to church it's okay if if uh, you serve more than one God it's okay if you do a little dirty deed in that business deal. It's okay if you have sex before marriage. It doesn't matter who you marry as long as you love them. It's okay. It's okay if you don't, if you're a girl and you want to be a boy. It's okay if you're a boy and you want to be a girl. The world will tell you what you want to hear. So that your flesh can be fed. That's what the voice of the world is doing. I want you to just take a moment to even just journal some voices that you have heard lately. And what have they been speaking to you? I want you to also consider some things that you currently do that are not of God and then journal what voices did you listen to to get where you are. those questions on the chat if you're like what did she say turn up some voices you have been hearing lately and what have they been speaking to you?
The other question was journal some things that you have done or are in that are not of God. Then journal what voices you listen to to get you where you are. What did those voices say to you? All right. So we have the voice of the flesh, which is our own voice and which is our flesh physically speaking to us that generally only wants to feed our will and our ambition, feeds our desires, our appetites. And then we have the voice of this world. that wants to entice us, entertain us, draw us away from God, lure us and trap us so that we would feed our flesh. And then we have the voice of the devil. So the voice of the devil or um it seeks to steal, kill, and destroy, okay? Spiritually and naturally, where we are not able to fulfill our purpose in life or to be fulfilled in the blessings of God, okay? And so, angels of light which we talked about earlier, those people who come up over the sheepfold, that, that come up over the wall into the sheepfold and act like God, they are oppressed by demonic spirits. So we can have literal demons operating in our lives. Then we can have people who are oppressed by demons speaking in our lives. We can have literal demons speaking in our lives and then people who are oppressed by demons speaking into our lives. Okay? And when demons come, they tend to try to stronghold us, depress us, oppress us, possess us, suppress us. Okay? So stronghold means they're building up a literal fortified wall or vain imagination or hierarchy in and around us in some type of way to box us in to a mindset, an ideology, an idea, or a oppressive state where that stronghold is now governing our lives instead of God. So that's what a stronghold is. When the spirit comes to possess you, it literally has not just taken up your heart, mind, and soul, but it lives in your spirit. And then that spirit now controls your life. When you are oppressed by a spirit, that spirit may come up on you at different times or it may live in your heart, mind, and soul and it may oppress different parts of your personality, your behavior, your actions, your thoughts. When a spirit comes to depress you, it actually 
uh, comes to pull you down to a lower place where you're now operating from a lower region or sphere than God will want you to in your life or where it has pulled you down in your mental state, your emotional state, or in your behavior. Okay, where you are under a depression. Okay, so you might literally feel depressed, like something is squashing you, pushing you down. Okay, something has pulled you down to a lower region of darkness. You might feel the doom and gloom around you. You might feel the mental oppression and just like voices um, coming at you, coming at you uh, uh, constantly, constant thought racing of negative thoughts, depressed thoughts, um, um, depressed emotions where you feel helpless, hopeless, scared, fearful, um, um, depressed, heavy in your spirit. You, you, you may feel death around you. You might feel like you're gonna die. Uh, you, you're in that depressed state. You, you're being pushed down to Shoal, a lower region uh, of living. A lower state of living, okay? Suppression is, is also similar to uh, depression. Also, with depression, you might feel like something is literally laying on you. This is why the word says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Because depression comes like a literal weight. And it might feel like you're carrying that burden, that darkness. Okay? Because that spirit is literally sitting on you or wrapped around you, pulling you down. Suppression is like where you're under the stupor of that thing. You're under, it's like a deaf and dumb spirit. It's like um, you know right from wrong, but when you start to operate, you operate under the litigation of what that spirit wants you to do. You, you operate like you're, for lack of a better word, please forgive me, stupid dumb, ignorant, like you don't know truth, because it has suppressed you under its governance, and so now it has you operating foolishly or contrary to truth. You also may feel like you're in a drug state, where you have been drinking or, or doing drugs, and it has subdued you under its um, under its bondage. That's what suppression is. Snares, snares are traps, imprisonments. You feel like you can't get out. You feel caved in. You feel uh, prisoned in. You might feel uh, um, trapped. You might literally feel. Um, chains and balls around your ankles, your your hands, your head, uh, uh, because you're snared in. Or what is do you is snared. It's in prison. It's been locked in. And, and you feel like you can't get out. And then infiltration is where the enemy has come in and brought that mixture that, that uncleanness, ungodliness, he, uh, he's infiltrated and, and stolen things from you, uh, uh, snatched things from you, uh, infiltrated in where all, now all of these things are operating in and around your life or in and around your heart, mind, and soul, and you have no control over it because the system of the world has come in and overrided the kingdom of God in your life.
So we know that the devil seeks to tempt us, to destroy us, to afflict us, to bind us, torment us, okay? To cause us to cycle and to be hindered from the things of God. So one of the things that the voice of the demonic does is it seeks to lie and deceive us. When you think about what does the voice of the devil sound like? He is a deceiver. Demons are deceivers. Demons are, are killers. They're destroyers. Okay? What does the voice of the devil sound like? In Revelation 11, 9 and through 11, it says that he is a snake and an accuser of the brethren. So when you start to hear that voice of an accuser, accusations flaring everywhere, that's the voice of the devil. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says that the devil is a roamer and a devourer. So when, 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 when you hear those voices that's trying to get you to go here, there, everywhere, and you're restless and you just can't seem to sit still, stay still in the things of God. Okay, it has you operate like a vagabond. You're just going here, 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 there, there, there. And there's no stability in your life. That's the enemy, that, that, that roaming spirit devouring you. Because if you can't stay stable in God, you can't grow. And then everything that is being poured into you is constantly being taken as you're going from place to place to place. This is why when you see people who live on the street, they don't have a lot of stuff with them because they can't carry it from place to place to place. It's impossible to sustain in anything valuable when you're constantly having to move around. In 1 Timothy 3 and 6, it says that the enemy is prideful. see if I can put this picture up okay it went on there you should be able to download that picture that's from uh, my PowerPoint okay the enemy is prideful he is puffed up in 1st Timothy 3 and 6 it, 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 it talks about pride okay and so this is what had Satan being thrown out of um, heaven. He got thrown out for being prideful. He wanted to be greater than God. Okay. The enemy is a demonic strategist. He, he's deceitful. He's crafty and cunning. He, he also is a fraud and a trickster. So when you, when you start to question your spirit, am I being tricked? Is, is somebody trying to get over on me? Is this voice trying to get over on me? You need to trust what you're hearing. The enemy is very subtle. So this is, this is why you need to ask the Lord when you start to hear voices. Is this you speaking? Okay. Sometimes it's good to say, you know, if, if, even if that voice say yes, then, then say, say Jesus Christ is Lord. You, you start to try that spirit to see if it be of God. Go ask somebody else that is mature to help you rightly discern. 
before you move on it, especially when you have that question in your spirit. Okay? The enemy brings fear. In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. So if you are feeling timid, fearful, anxious, you need to know that that's not the voice of God. Those are not the feelings of God. Okay? The enemy is a tempster. So if that voice is telling you, if you if you this, you that, then go prove it. God is not one that would have you go proving anything, defending yourself, unless it has a righteous cause attached to it. Okay? And so just to be going to validate yourself or going to prove a point or to make somebody else look bad or whatever, that's not the character of God. So we, we even have G, uh, uh, the enemy trying to tell Jesus, if you would be, if you're God, then throw yourself off this, this cliff. If you're God, then do this, this, or that, you know, or whatever. God doesn't play those games. He, 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 he is comfortable in who he is. He's confident in who he is. And he, he, he has given you his character, his image. And so he wants you to be confident and comfortable in who you are. You're not proving anything about who you are. You're living for him and allowing who he is on the inside of you to speak for you. The enemy is a sifter. and We know that in Luke 22, 31 through 32, he, he came to sift Peter like wheat. And so he, he likes to um, really... Um, little by little take what God has poured into us and so if you start to feel depleted in God you start to feel uh, uh, less like you're going to a, a lower dimension in, in your discipleship in your character in your drive and desire for God then there's something that could be sifting you or you could need to be doing more to go to another level in God, another dimension in God. Where you are is not able to sustain where you need to be. The enemy is lawless and so this is important because if you're breaking laws, if you're anti-submissive to authority, if there are voices telling you to dishonor your, your, the rules and regulations of your job, of your church, of your organization, telling you to uh, be anti-submissive to authority, uh, things of that nature, and, and where you're not doing things in honor or proper protocol, that is the voice of the devil. The devil speaks half truths, okay? Even as he would speak lies. So it's important to know that about him. That anything that is a half-truth is still a lie. God does not operate in half-truths. He operates in that which is factual, valid, and verifiable. The enemy has a tendency to ex exaggerate or distort truth. The enemy will encourage you to, to uh, not believe God, to mistrust God, and to doubt God. So if you're hearing voices uh, in those areas, then you need to know this is not God's voice. 
The enemy will entice you to sin. So anything that's drawing you into something that is sinful, it's not of God. And this is where it's so important to know God's word. God God is not going to go contrary to his word. He has boundaries. Okay. The enemy will make excuses and justify and rationalize doing wrong. And so if you are hearing voices that, that are telling you, oh, you're justified in this act. You deserve to do this. And, and you know it's a sin. Okay. That is not the voice of God. That is not the Holy Spirit giving you grace. Okay, that is a demonic voice drawing you away from God. The enemy will stir up thoughts and feelings of anger, contention, doubt, fear, confusion, loneliness, anxiety, pride, depression, stubbornness, bitterness, selfishness, despair, hopelessness, apathy, laziness, pessimism, lust. Okay, envy, jealousy. The, this is the character of demons or our human spirit. This is not the character of God. When it's your human spirit, you should be able to engage God and exchange these thoughts, okay, for truths from the Holy Spirit to pull you out of these characteristics or these unhealthy thoughts and feelings. How you know it's a spirit is oftentimes the spirit would just want to give you feed you excuses as to why you should stay in in this unhealthy state or you deserve to be angry they deserve your wrath because demons are not going to want you to change that voice of the devil is not going to want you to exchange freedom where they have to be cast out okay the enemy will encourage you to be cruel critical harsh and unnecessarily judgmental towards yourself or others Anytime God is judging you, he is also going to release revelation to restore you or to transform you. He's not just going to leave you in the judgment unless it is he has, you know, you have come to a reprobate place, which you have to do a lot to become to a reprobate place with God. God is always about reconciliation and restoration. The enemy is never going to encourage you to have healthy self-esteem. Instead, he he is going to uh, encourage you to have bloated pride. Okay, and haughtiness. He's not going to encourage you to have balanced self-esteem and self-confidence. So the voice of God generally is calm. It, It comforts. It convicts. It encourages. It enlightens. It leads. It reassures. Okay, and it steals you. It keeps you steady in him. And then the uh, voice of Satan. Uh, 
And I'm going to put that on the chat. We'll have you worried, obsessed, condemned. So if you're feeling condemned, if you're if you're just constantly in condemnation, shame, and guilt, that's the that's not the voice of the Lord. Okay? Discouragement, confusion. If that voice is pushy, it violates your free will. It's not the voice of God. It's the voice of Satan. If it's bringing fright, okay? If you feel pressured and unnecessarily rushed, okay? And there isn't any godly reasoning for it, it's most likely the voice of Satan, okay? So I'm not sure if you all have any questions. If you do, you can put them on the chat. Or you can unmute and ask them. Another thing about the voice of God versus the devil is the voice of God will draw you into obedience with him. And the voice of the devil will draw you into disobedience. So anything that's having you do something that's contrary to God, his will and his purpose is not his voice. God is always going to draw you into obedience. you to journal as you're considering what your questions would be if there have been any voices that has sought to steal kill and destroy you spiritually and naturally and if there have been what have they been speaking to you you to also journal what reasons are these demonic voices trying to destroy your life
then I want you to ask God what you need to do to shut down these voices in your life these demonic voices I want you to um, to journal, and then I do want you, Gail and Joyce, to unmute and share. I'm going to give you a moment to share in a few minutes. So thank you for putting it on the chat. Um, we are about to have a discussion. But I'm just giving some time to journal. We're kind of, we're activating the voice of God. Versus the devil, our voice, and the voice of the world. Joyce, can you unmute and share? Blessings. 